It's the second day of emergency efforts following the Boeing plane crash in China. Rescuers have found no signs of life, despite the aircraft's 132 passengers and crew. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has NATO on high alert. But will Russia stop with Ukraine? The U.S. and NATO caution to prepare for the worst. Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba is scrambling to boost its share price with a $25 billion move. But the problem goes far beyond market value. And for those watching our full episode, a Chinese bank sees $2 billion from real estate giant Evergrande. And with the money gone, experts say the firm won't be able to pay back its foreign debt. And economic pain in Hong Kong is forcing authorities to loosen the region's zero COVID-19 policy. That's despite the city facing its worst outbreak yet. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. China says they found no survivors so far from the plane crash yesterday. 132 people were on board. Authorities say the investigation is very challenging because the plane was severely damaged. NTD's Allison Lee has the details. Chinese officials confirmed on Tuesday that rescue teams have been unable to find any signs of life at the site of the plane crash. All they found were personal effects such as mud-stained wallets and ID cards. As of now, the rescue has yet to find survivors. The public security department has taken control over the site. The plane was a Boeing 737-800 operated by China Eastern Airlines. It was flying from Kunming in the southwest to Guangzhou on the southeastern coast when it crashed into the mountains of the Guangxi region Monday afternoon local time. 132 people were on board. The plane's age was 6.8 years. It satisfied the requirements to fly before takeoff, and its technical condition was stable. There was a crew of nine members on the plane, and the crew members were in good health. Authorities tried to explain what was happening to the plane immediately before the crash. The plane was at cruising altitude before plunging steeply. At 1421, the controller noticed that the aircraft attitude had dropped sharply and called the crew several times at random, but failed to receive any reply. At 1423, the radar signal of the aircraft disappeared. Residents living near the crash site said they heard loud sounds when the plane went down. I heard a big bang. At the time, some people were doing their work peeling tree bark. It was as loud as the sound of thunder striking. It was two loud sounds. A number of relatives, friends and colleagues of the passengers gathered at the destination airport in Guangzhou waiting for news. A man says one of his colleagues was on board. His relatives had very mixed feelings when I broke the news. They were sobbing. His mother didn't believe that this had happened. After I broke the news to her, she was sobbing. This is China's first fatal passenger jet crash since 2010. Authorities said they are beginning to investigate, but that it's very challenging because the plane was severely damaged. They are trying to recover the plane's black box and are unable to determine the cause of the crash at the moment. China Eastern Airlines grounded all of its Boeing 737-800s after the crash. Allison Lee, NTD News. Chinese media later confirmed that a security video camera from a local mining company captured the vertical drop from just over half a mile away. Russia's invasion of Ukraine has stirred fears within NATO that a new Iron Curtain could fall across Europe. But Europe is not the only front where world peace is on the line. We look at what implications the outcome of the war could have on global security. President Biden this week is heading to Europe. He will be meeting with heads of NATO, European and G7 leaders about how to stop Russia's ongoing attack on Ukraine. This, as Vladimir Putin's invasion, now seemingly on track to become a protracted war, is triggering geopolitical changes in the world at a scale not seen in decades. President Putin's war uh, in Ukraine is killing innocent civilians. NATO's response has been swift and decisive. The Russian president has unintentionally achieved what former U.S. President Donald Trump was trying to do. The war is motivating members of NATO to promise more defense spendings. After Germany uh, said over the weekend it would want to increase its budgets, uh, its defense budget, to reach 2 percent of GDP. NATO makes up a military alliance between 30 Western democracies alongside Germany's increase. 
Poland passed a law to increase its defense budget to at least 3 percent of its GDP by 2023. While frontline nations like Romania, Latvia, and Lithuania, fearful of Russian incursion, are pledging to boost military spending. NATO worries that Putin may not stop at Ukraine. That's why hours after Russia's attack on Ukraine began, five German warships set sail for Latvia to help protect the most vulnerable part of NATO's eastern flank. Under the Article 5 of the NATO Treaty, an attack on any member state equals an attack on the entire alliance and can justify military action by other members of the alliance. Worth noting, the U.S. is the head of the NATO and Canada is also a member. But President Biden has also called for caution, saying that direct confrontation with Russia could set off a global conflict. We will not fight a war against Russia in Ukraine. Direct confrontation between NATO and Russia is World War III. Eastern Europe isn't the only front where an Iron Curtain could fall and where overall world peace is on the line. As Western democracies reach record level unity against Russia, one regime is closely watching those actions as it calculates its next move. The Chinese regime is monitoring what's happening to Ukraine, which will likely influence the fate of the island of Taiwan. Either by force or not, taking over democratic Taiwan and putting it under communist rule is a non-negotiable goal for the Chinese Communist Party. The question for Beijing is not if, but when it will invade. But now the Communist Party watches as the West slaps crippling sanctions on Moscow while offering billions of dollars of military assistance to Ukraine's capital, Kyiv. Beijing is now considering whether its struggling post-pandemic economy will be able to take the same blow Russia did from Western sanctions, like getting kicked out of the SWIFT financial system. Even though most countries, including the U.S., don't formally recognize Taiwan as a sovereign nation, the island is arguably more strategically important than Ukraine to the safety of American territory. It's also a decade-long ally to the U.S. And what about American sentiment towards Taiwan? Polling data shows that the majority of American voters from both parties believe the U.S. should send troops to Taiwan if China invades, though many aren't willing to defend Ukraine. The outcome of the Ukraine invasion and the amount of Western resolve will likely have huge implications for global peace. Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba is taking action to prop up its tumbling share price. It raised its share buyback program to $25 billion on Tuesday. This comes as the company fights off Beijing's regulatory scrutiny and concerns about slowing growth amid the country's worsening virus outbreaks. The e-commerce titan said Tuesday that it would increase a planned share buyback to $25 billion. That's a record for the company. It's also the second time it's increased the buyback plan. Last year it was boosted from $10 billion to $15 billion. Alibaba is acting after its share price cratered more than 50% over the past year. It's been under pressure since late 2020, when billionaire founder Jack Ma publicly criticized Chinese regulators. Watchdogs later slapped it with a record $2.8 billion fine for anti-competitive behavior and halted a blockbuster IPO for its financial arm. Investors also worry about mounting competition and slowing growth. Now the firm says the decline doesn't fairly reflect its value and outlook. It's also hoping to sell into a rising market. Chinese tech stocks have been buoyed in recent days after China said it would take steps to support the economy. Alibaba's Hong Kong traded shares jumped over 11 percent following news of the buyback plan. A company may choose to buy its shares back for several reasons. One, to boost confidence in the company's overall health and outlook. And two, the move raises earnings per share. But how does Alibaba's move tie into the U.S. market? The company has been listed on the New York Stock Exchange since 2014 under ticker name Baba. Because of that history, American investors are involved too. Right now, Chinese regulators are reaching out to Alibaba and a number of other Chinese companies listed in the U.S., telling them to prepare for more audit disclosures. So far, Chinese authorities have refused to open those companies' books to U.S. regulators, citing national security concerns. The move comes as Beijing works to keep its domestic companies listed in New York. 
To end the first part of our show, we'd like to share a comment from one of our viewers named G. Tay. The comment referred to our Monday coverage about human rights violations in Tibet. G. Tay said the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, is trying to replace Tibetan culture with the CCP's culture rather than authentic Chinese culture. Ji Tae differentiated between Chinese culture and that pushed forward by the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. They note how the regime has worked to destroy Chinese culture since it took power 70 years ago, and how the CCP has taken over the name association with the word Chinese due to the large number of Chinese people around the world. They go on to state that the values and principles of CCP culture are the exact opposite of that of real Chinese culture, adding that by not distinguishing between the two, the term Chinese culture becomes tainted by the communist regime. We appreciate the feedback and agree with the distinction. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We are now sharing a shortened version of our program on YouTube. That's after being demonetized for a year. Full episodes can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a 14-day free trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful, it leaves you in awe. So inspiring, it changes your life. So beautiful. You wish it would never end. When that happens, it's something not to be missed. Shen Yun, an all-new production every year. The performance was enchanting. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. It touches you. It really does. The expertise of the dancers was really, really strong. To know that it was live music was really fantastic. We didn't want to miss this. Make sure you see it. Have to come. Life-changing.